The movie starts in the year 1962 on an Italian ocean liner named Grazza. A singer named Francesca is entertaining the guests who enjoy the night dancing with their loved ones. Amidst the crowd, a little girl named Katie sits alone because she doesn't have a partner to dance with. The captain of the ship notices this and brings her to the floor. The lively party quickly turns into a dreadful one when an unknown hand lifts a lever that tightens a wire cord. The wire then snaps and whips across the dance floor, bisecting the passengers and crew. Their bodies thump on the ground one after another, creating a bloodbath. The only person left alive on the dance floor is Katie, since the wire couldn't get her because of her height. The scene cuts 40 years later to the future. A salvage crew of six people is rescuing a random vessel from the sea. Captain Murphy leads his team and successfully brings the ship to the shore. The group then goes to a pub to celebrate, where they are approached by an old acquaintance named Jack. Jack also works in the marine business and has heard about a ghost ship from 1962. Rumor has it that the ship contains a chest of gold that has been missing for half a century. The person who brings the ship to the shore gets to claim whatever is in it. This sparks the crew's interest, and they set off to look for the ship on their salvage tug the next day. After a few hours long trip, they reach the destination, but the tracker shows no ships around the area. They check if it is working properly and come to the conclusion that the report was fake. Just when they are about to turn around, they get a view of a massive commercial ship in front of them. Their boat slams into the ship, but luckily the impact is not damaging. After dwelling on who gets to go inside first, Jack and a crewmate, Greer, stay behind while the other four enter the ship. Only seconds after their arrival, the group starts experiencing paranormal activities. First, they hear random noises. Then, they see things moving through the dark corners. They blame it on the wind and keep moving, but behind them, a scrabble moves on its own and forms the words, Welcome aboard. I call bullshit. No one ever gets a hand that good in Scrabble. When they are on the upper deck, one of the crew members named Munder falls into a hole, but he is saved by the only woman in the group, Maureen. As she tries pulling him up, the little girl, Katie, suddenly appears in the background. She disappears within seconds, not giving Maureen a chance to comprehend whether she was real. The incident makes her feel uneasy, but she doesn't tell anyone about it. A little further, the group discovers a digital watch on the floor. Since these kinds of watches were not a thing in 1962, they theorize that someone has been on the ship before them. After that, the captain decides to continue the search the next day, since the ship is massive. When Maureen is alone at night, Jack approaches her. He senses that she is tense after saving Munder earlier. Upon finding out about the little girl, Jack goes quiet for a few seconds. He seems to know something, but doesn't show it on the outside. Instead, he suggests Maureen sleep for some more hours to get rid of the hallucinations. The next day, the crew sits down to plan their next move. They have discovered that the ship is slowly sinking because of a damage to its base. They decide to stay in the water for three days to fix it and then return to shore with the entire ship. Without wasting much time, they continue their respective jobs on the different parts of the ship. Meanwhile, Maureen explores it and reaches the swimming pool area. She notices bullet marks on the wall, which is strange because they were told that all passengers died of drowning. While trying to climb out of the pool, she again comes face to face with Katie. Startled, she falls off the ladder and starts bleeding from her head. However, when she looks back up, Jack is standing in the place where Katie was seconds ago. The two walk away, without noticing that Marine's blood is disappearing from the pool. Soon, the bullet holes start oozing out blood, and the entire pool is filled with it. Ghosts don't have blood. After that, Jack and Maureen explore the laundry room and find another door that was not in the ship's blueprint. Upon opening it, they are pushed by a force of water, which also brings mutilated corpses out of the locked room. Both Jack and Maureen panic and try to run away. However, the door they came through locks on its own, leaving them no option but to go further into the ship. In the meantime, Captain Murphy ends up in the captain's lounge. He finds an opened bottle of alcohol, but while trying to take a sip, he sees the ship's actual captain in the mirror. The glass drops and shatters as Murphy runs away in fear. Unaware of the paranormal activities, Greer is minding his own business. When he hears someone singing, it is Francesca, the same performer who was entertaining the passengers on board in 1962. Greer looks for the source of the sound but gives up after a while. What he doesn't know is that the woman is watching him walk away from behind him. 
Somewhere else, Jack and Maureen come across a chest filled with blocks of gold. It is worth millions of dollars that everyone in the crew can take home. They excitedly gather everyone and show them the treasure. Now they no longer need to repair the ship and can return home with just the treasure. In the following scene, everyone is loading the gold into their boat. The mechanic, Santos, is cleaning the engines so they would be ready when they decide to leave. Behind him, someone deliberately leaks propane from a cylinder, which causes an explosion. It results in Santos's death and the boat's destruction. Everyone is shocked and saddened by the unexpected death. Moreover, now they are stuck on the ship until they manage to repair it. Right before the explosion, Maureen had seen Katie again. It was as if she was trying to warn Maureen about the explosion, but was stopped by someone. This is enough reason for Maureen to look into who Katie is. She goes through the passenger registry and finds out her room number. On walking to the room, Maureen screams in shock. It turns out that Katie died of hanging as her decomposed corpse is still hung from the ceiling. After composing herself, Maureen comes closer and takes a necklace off Katie's corpse. Her spirit appears in the room and asks for the necklace. Maureen tries handing it to her but it goes right through her palm. It is now clear to her that the little girl is not a human. Took her long enough. In the kitchen, two crew members find fresh meals. They do not question it before devouring half of the food. Initially, it tastes amazing, but after a while, they smell a horrible scent. On checking, they see that the food has turned into maggots. Both of them panic and start vomiting in disgust. Then there is Greer, who is in the ballroom. Everything is normal until, all of a sudden, the place transforms into how it looked before the wreckage. The guests surround him and act like they are at a typical party. Moreover, Francesca seems to have extra interest in him. She flirts with the guy and manipulates him into kissing her, even though he has a fiancé waiting for him at home. After the kiss, he is already too deep to back out. Francesca starts undressing while he follows her, hoping to end up in her room. But instead, he falls off a high platform and dies. This is a metaphor for where cheating gets you in life. The beautiful woman then shows her real, deformed face. In the meantime, Murphy is in the captain's room when suddenly, a bottle of alcohol starts moving on its own. He looks at it closely, then finds the ship's captain sitting in front of him. The man offers Murphy some alcohol, much to his disbelief. The captain is not here to hurt him, but to have a chat. He tells Murphy about a lost ship named Lorelei. Forty years ago, when everything came down, the Lorelei ship was found by Grazza, the ship they are on right now. But two days after finding the lost ship, Grazza also disappeared. With that being said, Murphy is handed a picture that leaves him in shock. Meanwhile, Katie and Maureen are also chatting in her room. The little girl reveals that everyone who died on the ship 40 years ago has been trapped here ever since. They cannot go to heaven because someone powerful is binding them to the ship. Now, the only way they can be released is if the ship is destroyed. Before Katie explains who the powerful person is, the walls in the room start changing colors. She panics and orders Maureen to run away before disappearing herself. Back in the swimming pool area, Murphy is looking for the rest of the crew. He has finally found out the truth about the ship's disappearance and wants to return to the shore as soon as possible. But on the way, he is attacked by several Santos, the guy who died in the explosion earlier. The hallucination seems so real that when Maureen approaches him, Murphy thinks she is also the ghost of Santos. He attacks her and does everything he can to end her life. Maureen somehow manages to stab him in the feet and save herself. A while later, Jack arrives and knocks Murphy out for their own safety. They put him in a drained fish tank and lock him inside. By now, the group doesn't care about the gold and just wants to return to land. They continue fixing the ship for the next few hours and finally get it done. Since Greer has still not returned from the lounge area, everyone is worried. While the guys do some last minute checking, Maureen goes to look for him. She yet again comes across Katie who shows her Greer's dead body. This time, the girl is adamant about showing Maureen everything that happened on the ship 40 years ago. She touches Maureen and brings her to the past. The ship is lively with people's chatter and laughs, but what they do not know is that the co-captain has convinced the entire crew to kill everyone on board for the gold they found earlier. The cooks mixed rat poison with the food, which killed the majority of the people. Then, the dance floor massacre followed. The remaining survivors were shot dead in the pool. Poor Katie was dragged into her room and hanged to death. At last, 
last, the crew members ran to the treasure and started grabbing whatever they could, but the co-captain didn't allow that either. Joining hands with Francesca, he shot every single one of them. At last, the two of them were left before Francesca betrayed him and shot him in the head. It turned out her actual lover is a different man who was also the mastermind behind the entire massacre. After killing hundreds of people, they shared a passionate kiss, but the surprises did not end there. The man killed Francesca by releasing a hook that slashed into her neck and hooked her. Damn, the 2000s were gruesome. In the end, the man is revealed to be none other than Jack. He is a demonic spirit of a dead sinner. His job is to make people sin and then kill them to bring their souls to hell. Everything makes sense to Maureen now because Jack was the one who told them about the ship in the first place. He also appeared out of nowhere when Maureen saw Katie in the pool. Moreover, he has been asking her to forget about Katie every time she told him about her. Maureen suddenly remembers Murphy, but when she reaches him, he has already drowned and died in the aquarium. She quickly goes to the others to warn them of the murderer on board. Munder is scuba diving in the flooded engine room to fix something. She wants to follow him, but the pipes fill with blood, ghost blood, indicating that he has also died. It turns out that someone pulled him into the gears and ground him to death. Now, the only two people left are Marine and the last crew member named Dodge. She asks him to keep an eye out for Jack while she places explosives on the ship. But when Dodge and Jack are alone, Jack plays games with his head and starts a fight. In a fit of rage, Dodge shoots him and assumes that he is dead. He then goes to Maureen, who has just finished setting the explosives. He tells her he killed Jack and that they can start a life together using the gold. Maureen thinks about it for a second and then asks him why he hasn't inquired about Munder, who still hasn't been found. It is then revealed that the person is actually Jack, who was trying to make Maureen sin. As long as this boat remains, the souls will never be let free. Jack knows that Maureen is a good person, so he offers to spare her life in exchange for her not interfering with his rules. But in response, Maureen detonates the explosives. Jack and the entire ship are blown into pieces, while Maureen jumps off and saves her life. She is underwater, struggling to find a way out, when Katie comes to her rescue. Finally, Finally, all the souls who died on the ship are let free. The next morning, a cruise ship finds Maureen floating on a box and she is rescued. As she is being taken away in an ambulance, she notices a crate of gold being loaded onto a cruise ship. Jack has somehow been resurrected and is planning to continue the cycle of sin. The movie ends as Maureen screams and the ambulance door closes. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.